Geography 100 Lecture Podcast Series. I'm Brian Krauss, your instructor, and today we're going to be discussing glacial characteristics. In this mini lecture, like all the mini lectures, I don't cover all the topics or ideas that are being presented in your text. Rather, my goal here is to highlight a few key ideas and then kind of go then into them with a little bit more detail. So on that note, let's jump into uh, So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to differentiate between continental and alpine glaciers. And you should also be able to describe features uh, formed by continental and alpine glaciers. So glaciers are a very unique feature on the Earth's surface, as we'll see here in the coming slide. And geologists call them rivers of ice and snow. And they move very similar to how water would flow. And they are, the flow is based on the slope of the land. So for example, the steeper the slope, the faster the movement of ice and snow. So it all comes down to how much snow is going to accumulate in these upper elevations. So here's an image of the Columbia ice field in the Canadian Rockies. And we can see uh, the ice kind of moving down the center of that valley there that it's carved over millions of years. So glacial movement is very similar to water, but slower. So water moves the uh, fastest in the middle just below the surface. And the same thing is true with glacial ice. And the reason is, is that there's a lot of friction along the edges of a glacier and along the bottom of the glacier. So again, velocity of the glacier is dependent on the slope of the land. And here is a view uh, of the side view profile showing the velocity is greatest in the middle top of a glacier, just the same as you would expect in water running down. There are several types of glaciers that we're going to be talking about. The first type is called an alpine glacier. And these are found in the upper elevations where the snow is going to accumulate uh, year after year after year. And these glaciers get so massive that they carve gigantic U-shaped valleys uh, in the landscape, uh, much like you're going to see kind of here in this picture of the Cottonwood Canyon, which is in the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. So this huge valley here was carved by a glacier at one point, moving down. The second type of glacier is continental ice sheet that's formed in non-mountainous areas. And this is where uh, full continents are covered by ice and snow. And this is going to be uh, Antarctica and Greenland as two examples. Here in Idaho, we had a continental glacier cover central and northern Idaho in the last 100,000 years. And these recent events left most of the physical evidence that we see today. So the reason why we have so many of these fantastic features uh, as a result of glaciers. And here's the ice coverage of North America uh, during the Wisconsin Ice Age, which was about 18,000 years ago. And we can kind of see how it extended into kind of the northern part of, uh, of the United States, a little bit more when it comes to the East Coast than the West Coast. So there are three zones of the glacier that you should know. Uh, you have the zone of accumulation, the ablation zone, and that's the zone of melting, and the equilibrium line. We'll look at those in a little bit more detail in the coming slide. So now when you get more accumulation of snow than melting, the glacier is going to get bigger, or it's going to be growing. And when there is more melting than accumulation, the glacier is going to be getting smaller, or it's going to be retreating. When melting and accumulation equal each other, the glacier is said to be a stationary. So here is an illustration of what I'm, I'm talking about. And here is the zone of accumulation where the amount of new snow each year uh, exceeds the amount that's lost. So it's going to be creating more and more snow, which is going to get packed down and create this ice. And the zone of ablation is where the loss of ice mass is greater than accumulation. And the separation here which is the line of equilibrium, is along where the accumulation exactly balances ablation. So you should be familiar with those, those terms. So glaciers not only deposit, but they also erode features. And so in the next few slides, I'm going to briefly discuss some of these erosional features of a mountain or alpine glacier. First is a cirque, and this is where the zone of accumulation, where the ice is accumulating, the glacier is going to pluck rocks out from this head of the valley. And the erosional features create this huge amphitheater-like depression in the valley head, which is called the cirque. So we can see here in this picture, uh, the glacier was at the head of this, um, this cirque, this valley head, and it was 
slowly plucking away all these rocks, carving away, carving away back and back into this valley uh, head, and it created this this amphitheater-like feature. An arete, which is a rock that separates several cirques, so several two cirques are on each side, kind of eroding away at this, and the result is this very sharp-looking ridge where we had a uh, cirque on either side forming this arete. Sometimes you get multiple cirques in a mountain and you get something called a horn. And the most famous of this, these horns is the one called the Matterhorn in Switzerland. And so here we can see there was multiple cirques uh, and they were both or all eating away at this head wall and they ended up creating this great fantastic looking horn. So a characteristic shape produced by both continental and mountain glaciers is a roche montagnée, which is this elongated knob of bedrock that has been carved away and smoothed by an overriding glacier. So here's a figure from your text that illustrates the process and outcome. As the glacier moves from right to left, it creates this glacial abrasion or ice polishing uh, from the sediment that's been picked up by the glacier. On the least side of the roche Monte, glacier plucking occurs and it pulls these rocks out because it just entails plucking. And so here's another example. And we can see that the glacier was moving from the right to the left in your picture here. And as it's going to the left, it plucks these rocks out as it moves away and creates a very ragged, ragged edge. There are also several types of depositional features associated with continental ice sheets. Till, which is also called moraine, is simple deposit of fine and coarse textured uh, material and is distinguished by its lack of any kind of sorting. So notice here that there's no sorting, there's no organization of the material. It's just kind of large uh, pieces of material, small pieces of material, kind of randomly assorted. And that's a classic example of, of where the leading edge of a glacier was located, a terminal or end moraine can be found. Now the terminal moraine marks the furthest advance of an ice sheet. And so here's an example of a terminal moraine. And here we can see the till that was left by this glacier as it kind of moved down uh, this valley, pushing this debris and left this terminal moraine. And no, that's not a picture of me uh, on top of this, this moraine, but it just happened to be a great example of what a terminal moraine looks like, so I used it. And so behind the terminal moraine is found is what's called a recessional moraine, and it's deposited when the ice sheet receives and stops for a period of time and then will recede again and stop for a period of time. So note that here in this example, there are these two black arrows, are two recessional moraines that are formed by a glacier that's been receding up this valley. So as you would expect, somewhere below those um, two black arrows is the terminal moraine. So ground moraine is till that was lodged beneath the glacier and generally found behind the terminal moraine. So wetland areas are often created uh, where ground moraines were. Sometimes glaciers can produce these elongated hills called drumlins during their deposition. And drumlins are just simply unassorted glacial till. Also these drumlins show the direction of which the ice was flowing. So here's an illustration showing the ice flow direction and the resulting shape of the drumlin. Notice that the blunt end of the drumlin is the direction from which the ice came. And here is a side view of a drumlin. Uh, and we can see that the ice was flowing coming from the right and going to the left because the uh, right side of this drumlin is the more blunt end. So continuing with depositional features, there are kettles, which are these pits in the surface that may or may not be occupied by water. And they form when isolated blocks of ice are left behind by a retreating glacier and becomes surrounded by till or this stratified drift. After a period of time, that ice block melts away, leaving behind a hole in the surface called a kettle lake. And here you can see a bunch of kettle lakes in Northwest Territory of Canada. And you can notice that you have this little depositional feature around these kettles where these big blocks of ice were in and then they melted and left behind these kettle lakes, which are fabulous, uh, fabulous pictures. An outwash plane forms a head of the terminal moraine as meltwater from the snout of a glacier deposits sand and other fine sediment. And so here is a glacier in Glacier Bay National Park in Alaska. 
showing a kind of a braided outwash plain that forms this uh, delta that originates from this subglacial stream uh, from the glacier. And you kind of note that the outwash consists of very fine sediment. So you don't have any big particles here in this, uh, this glacial outwash plain. The final type of depositional feature we'll talk about are eskers, and they're sinuous ridges of this uh, glacial fluvial material that form in tunnels in an ice sheet. And the sides of the tunnels act as part of a channel for meltwater, uh, stream meltwater. As the glacier recedes, the support for the stream is removed, and the stream deposits its load into this long ridge-like form. And eskers are a great source for sand and gravel. And here's an esker from the northwest Manitoba, uh, which is composed of sand and gravel. So you can see this long kind of um, channel ridge that's kind of formed from this esker. Uh, it kind of reminds me of this gigantic uh, mole run, if you can uh, imagine that in your yard. Uh, but that's what it reminds me of. And on that note, that concludes Glacial Modification of Terrain, Chapter 19. Have a great day.